Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing awesome out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day. And I hope everyone's been having a great weekend out there so far. Here bringing the latest on what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire Louisville 48 for your Sunday. All in all, just like yesterday, not a very active weather uh, day whatsoever. Some of the same areas across the Deep South will see some pesky rain showers and maybe even heavy rain for certain areas. Some areas could see another inch, inch and a half of rain. So we will zoom into that area, speak on that. That, but nothing significant weather-wise happening across the lower 48 for today. So that's the good news, but we will speak on everybody, break it down section by section across the entire country, just like we always do, regardless if it's active or not. But we are going to give you a big update on the tropics. There's a couple areas I'm watching. One is Tropical Storm Gordon, not going to bother a soul, but we will continue to mention it just to kind of watch to see if it can do anything sneaky or anything like that, but we're not expecting it to do so. We also are watching the Caribbean, not anytime soon, but really in that seven to 10 day range, I want to watch the Caribbean into the Southwest uh, Atlantic, maybe even the Gulf of Mexico. Some of these models are showing, in fact, the GFS and the Euro is showing it a big slug of moisture that could consolidate into something. So I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. We'll speak on that here in a second. But then we are watching something much closer to us, quite literally, in time and it's just right off the coast of the southeast this could develop into a depression or maybe take a name and develop into a tropical storm our next name is helene not helen helene so could this do that it absolutely could if it's going to do it it's going to do it over the next um 24 to probably 48 hours so we're going to speak on that pretty heavy right at the beginning of this video because my folks in the carolinas definitely need to be aware of this this could i think this regardless is going to bring some impacts a big slug of heavy rain into the carolinas especially north carolina and virginia uh to kick start our work week so we'll speak on all this timestamps will be up throughout the entire video for you guys to take advantage of if you guys have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it, run out of words here. And uh, if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling this morning. So let's make sure this is working. It is good to go. That's Tropical Storm Gordon right here. Not expected to bother anybody. It's just moving very slow, almost stationary, just chilling out here in the North Atlantic. So I do want to circle that. That's Gordon. Um, nothing going on here in the Caribbean, but I, I, like I said, I'll mention that we need to watch this area here in about a week or so. Okay. And then there's this area right here. This is dubbed Invest 95L, but it's mainly right in here. I don't know why I drew that circle so large. Right into here. And I'm going to zoom into this area here in a second. Invest 95L, this does have a shot to become a tropical storm. This is just a big area of shower and storm activity off the coast of the Carolinas. So that's all we're watching right now, Gordon, and then Invest 95L. So peak hurricane season, no hurricanes out here. Uh, that's the good news. So let's look at the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Let's just double check to make sure we don't have another update. We do not. There's Gordon is a 40 mile per hour tropical storm. So barely hanging on to that tropical storm status. And then we got this. All right, this area in orange, this is 95L, Invest 95L has a 50% chance to develop sometime, technically in the next seven days. But if it's going to develop, it's going to develop. In fact, let's just look at the two-day graphic here. Yeah, 50% chance uh, to develop sometime in the next 48 hours. So if it's going to do it, it's got to do it in the next 48 hours. If it doesn't do it in the next 48 hours, it's not going to develop into anything. So a 50-50 shot, this could get bumped up to a 60% chance. We'll have to watch it. But all in all, model guidance between the time I made the video yesterday morning and this morning it's pretty much remained about the same confidence hasn't really decreased or increased and you know that's why the national hurricane center has pretty much kept it at a 50 percent chance for a while now but let's take a closer look at this all right the sun hasn't fully came up on this area yet so we can only look at this but you know the the orange and the reds and even the pockets of black here just indicates colder cloud tops which means we just have consistent um intense convection firing off in these areas and if you look really closely it's going to be hard to tell very very hard to tell but you can see a little bit of cyclonic motion right in here some wrapping of the winds and there's probably a little bit of turning right in here not anything defined if it was defined it would be dubbed a tropical depression who knows by the time i drop this video they might dub this a tropical depression or a ptc8 or you know potential tropical cyclone all that fancy terminology but we are watching this area there's a little bit of a low right here and this is going to try to do something sneaky over the next 48 hours and then eventually see that south carolina north carolina 
kind of move in general like this way. It could do this. It could do that. Okay, but we're going to watch if something can come together at the last second and then become Helene, Tropical Storm Helene. So we're definitely watching this. This is a closer look at it. Obviously, this is not organized. We don't have any full wrapping of convection on the southern side. Just very um, disorganized, that's for sure. So let's get all this back off your screen. Let's continue to move forward here. So let's look at, excuse me, some of the model guidance here. So let's start off this morning. Um, just a low pressure. Here we go. And I do want to make sure of something here. This is, yes. I'll, in my head, I was sitting here like uh, questioning myself. This is Invest 95L, right? But I, I was correct. So there's so many Invest out there right now that it's hard to, um, it, it's easy to mix them up. That's for sure. So let's go back to the GFS. Uh, Invest 95L right off the coast of the Carolinas right here. Watch out this, as this kind of develops over the next 24 hours. We get into about midday today. Still off the coast of the of the southeast and then we get into this evening okay based off the gfs this is a big slug of moisture getting very close in fact it's kind of it's kind of just right up against the carolina coastline not a whole lot of rain is pushed inland you got some scattered showers into you know the carolinas this weekend i'm sorry uh later on today but as we are getting into uh tonight like the next 18 hours this pushes an all-out tropical low right into the grand strand in fact it deepens it all the way to a thousand and two millibar low i mean i would argue that might be a weak tropical storm right into like georgetown myrtle beach and brings a big slug of heavy rain and just shower and storm activity tropical moisture right into southeast north carolina right into extreme eastern and northeastern south carolina and this continues and i mean brings a lot of heavy rain for example if this is something that happens it's going to happen over the next 24 hours we're waking up tomorrow morning to an all-out tropical low uh, that's moving inland to South Carolina, bringing a ton of heavy rain from, I mean, uh, this would be from Myrtle Beach all the way up to Chesterfield through Florence, um, maybe all the way back to Orangeburg, all the way over to Fayetteville, Wilmington. So this would bring a lot of activity. Okay, so this is something to watch. And then we continue into about midday tomorrow. It brings a lot of rain into Charlotte. Uh, you got this low going right over Florence, South Carolina, big area of moisture over almost the entire state of North Carolina, except maybe the mountains. But this would bring some gusty winds. I would say this is the worst case scenario. This would bring um, some nasty weather into the Carolinas tomorrow. And, you know, like I said, worst case scenario, I would say the GFS deepens this uh, more than any of the other model guidance. But this would bring a big slug of moisture right into the Carolinas. We'll make it all the way to the mountains. It would bring beneficial rains into Virginia. And then it'll begin to dissipate, but continue to bring rain all the way up into the mid-Atlantic. What about the Euro? Euro continues to kind of dance this off the coast of the southeast a little bit longer. So, you know, we get into like tomorrow morning. Remember, the GFS is already bringing this low right into like the Grand Strand region. On the Euro, it has this low way down here, like south of Charleston. Now it's starting to bring a lot of rain to the Carolina coastline, but it really just kind of keeps this low off the coast of the Carolinas through, I mean, pretty much through all the way Tuesday morning. And it sort of kind of goes back and forth, starts to bring a lot of rain up into Virginia, North Carolina. And then it finally moves it inland sometime midday Tuesday. Remember, the GFS does it tomorrow morning. So the timing of this is way off. Now, if you go and you look at the icon model from this morning, let's back this up a little bit. Icon takes this okay and develops it as low as a thousand and two millibar low then weakens it a little bit and it makes a landfall more so like in the middle of the night tomorrow night maybe getting into tuesday morning and brings a lot of moisture into the carolina so the gfs may be a little bit of an outlier but this would bring a lot of moisture into the mid-atlantic too it would bring a lot of nasty weather by tuesday afternoon up into west virginia the mountains of virginia so this is something we need to watch guys and if you look at some of the Hurricane model guidance here. I can tell you, more of these have this going into South Carolina rather than North Carolina. So maybe, maybe the GFS is on to something. But this is kind of the latest 06Z morning model guidance. Um, a lot of these are going into South Carolina. So we just need to watch this. It's definitely interesting. Uh, kind of really close to home development, homegrown activity. Just a lot of energy firing off a stalled out frontal boundary that's hanging out over the southeast. So I will show you. Kind of the depiction on what the latest HER model is showing. Not the best tropical model to show, but it's a great 
way to kind of tell us what the radar is going to look like. I think it does well with the radar with tropical systems. It just, it, as far as how deep sometimes it gets these tropical systems, it's not as bad as the NAM, but still anyways, let's keep this going. This morning, just some scattered showers, downpours, you know, really off the coast of the Carolinas. As we're getting into this afternoon, we start to get some rain that makes its way to the South Carolina coastline, especially maybe some showers all the way back to Columbia. Scattered downpours are possible all the way up to Raleigh. And then we continue to get into the overnight hours, and then we start to get into Monday morning. Now, I can tell you the HER model doesn't do what the GFS shows. HER model, you know, GFS has uh, this making landfall along the Grand Strand, Georgetown, between Georgetown and North Myrtle, or Little River, I would say, tomorrow morning. The low is still well off the coastline on the HER model. Okay, so it kind of tells me even more that maybe the GFS is an outlier. Um, but then we start to get to about midday tomorrow, early afternoon, starts to bring a lot of heavy rainfall along the North Carolina coastline, especially southeast North Carolina. And then we start to get into tomorrow evening, and then you might get all out tropical storm force conditions in eastern North Carolina. I mean, we start to get some intense banding along the outer banks, you know, all the way down to, you know, Carolina Beach, Wilmington, all these areas starts to get some nasty weather tomorrow. And then this makes that technical landfall um sometime late tomorrow night and this is bringing a lot of heavy rain from Fayetteville up to Raleigh I mean all the way up to Danville um I know all the way across pretty much everybody in the eastern North Carolina area and this is as far out as it goes it goes all the way out to about 2 a.m Tuesday so uh yeah this would bring a pretty nasty night of weather tomorrow night for especially North Carolina but some model guides can, you know, just continues to want to show more so South Carolina. But it looks like the average state is North Carolina with this for sure. So rainfall between now and Thursday morning. The, the National Weather Service obviously likes North Carolina mainly too. There's a stout cutoff of rainfall uh, in central South Carolina. For example, you know, Columbia only going for a little over a quarter inch. You know, Charlotte, an inch and a quarter. Uh, you know, you head on over to like Myrtle Beach going for two and a half inches of rain just about. And then, of course, along the North Carolina coastline, you got anywhere from four to six inches of rain expected. And look at all this rain expected for Virginia. This is much needed rain for you folks up here. Several inches of rain as possible. And we even go up to the mid-Atlantic. This could bring a good bit of rain for you guys, too. We'll extend this out to about Saturday morning. Could get a lot of rain up into the tide water. Tide water. Um, and then the Delmarva could get a few inches of rain. So we just got to figure out how far north this shield of rain makes it, but definitely some beneficial rain for you guys up in this area. Winds, um, gusty. I mean, there's gusty winds at my house right now. Um, I walked outside in the middle of the night, let the dogs out, and I mean, it was breezy conditions at like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so it's already pretty breezy out here across the Carolinas right now. But, you know, if you're going off the National Weather Service uh, max wind gust, I mean, they're saying the max could be, you know, 30, 30 miles per hour or so. If you look at a worst case scenario, which is the GFS, um, it wants to bring this slug of very strong winds. I don't think this is going to happen, but it brings 40 to almost 60 mile per hour wind gust um, pretty far inland. Uh, so I would say this is a worst case scenario. Um but the best the best case scenario, and I would say more likely the scenario, is probably just some gusty 25, 35 mile per hour winds, maybe an occasional 40 mile per hour wind gust and some of these heavy bands in this area. So, uh, you know, I do want to mention Tropical Storm Gordon. It's out here. Um, it's I think I've already mentioned this, actually. No, I haven't. I actually I haven't showed you the actual cone. So that's the actual cone for Tropical Storm Gordon, as you can tell, U.S. way over here greater and lesser until the Bermuda way over here. So this is not going to bother a soul. It's going to make an abrupt turn, most likely sometime this week and remain a tropical depression. Could just be hanging out with us for a while, but it's not going to bother anybody, it looks like so. But I do want to mention the area down here in the Caribbean. So we're going to start this off uh, this coming Thursday evening, September the 19th. By the way, we're just cruising right on through September, aren't we? It's pretty crazy. Um, Told my wife today, I was like, we need to get some more fall decorations. Um, it, it'll be Christmas time before we know it. So, <laughs> um, but anyways, we started off uh, Thursday evening. We're getting into Friday. I want you to just kind of watch this area down here. You start to see a whole lot of green, even some pockets of yellow, just a lot of tropical moisture. There it is. It actually develops a low pressure sometime in the next six days down here. 
develops this low, tries to develop it eventually north of Cuba into the Bahamas. You know, we get into about eight days from now, and we're getting about nine days from now. Tries to get this low developing off the coast of the Carolinas. And we just got to watch this area. Um, it keeps showing up. And, you know, once we get past 10 days, it's not even worth showing. But the Euro shows the same setup now. Okay, we continue to move here, and we get into next weekend. This is about a week from today. Look at this slug of moisture down here in the Western Caribbean. And, and just a lot of unsettled weather here. And, you know, we get into this time of the year. We know it's still very warm down here. I mean, it's still mid to late September. Um, surface of the ocean, very warm like bathtub waters. And uh, something can get going down here. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see some wild runs from this area. In fact, I think we saw one last night where the GFS had like a hurricane hitting the Gulf Coast line. But, you know, just be careful looking at that kind of stuff. There's, it's unbelievable the amount of people that, you know, will believe just one run. Uh, nothing to get concerned about. But, you know, big slug of moisture. I want to watch. I think regardless, you got a big rainy pattern coming up for Florida up into the southeast here in the next week. Um, I really do. So it's something to watch for flash flooding, regardless if anything actually develops or not. I do want to show you those, the GFS kind of just showing you energy in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. You can see this energy. This is getting into next weekend. See this kind of areas of like yellow, I mean, orange, red, just energy down here in the Caribbean. And we got this area right here too. This is like a cutoff low. These can do some wild stuff in the tropics too. And we kind of just have two like steering mechanisms right here. This cutoff low and this energy right here. So this is the cutoff low, right? This is kind of the energy right here that's kind of shot out uh, the deep deep out of the uh, Caribbean here. So this is moving this way. You got this kind of area right here moving like this. So, so some weird stuff could happen here. This, this kind of cutoff low could actually help aid in pushing this energy out of the Caribbean up into the Southwest Atlantic, up into this area, and then something could develop right into here. Um, not to the point where I'm going to say, let's make a bet on it or anything like that, but I just want to watch this area and the seven to 10 day time frame. I really do. So, um, nothing concerning right now though, guys. Um, but let's talk about weather wise back home. Um, we got a system moving into the Western U S it's going to bring unsettled weather more so for tomorrow, but we're already getting a streamer of showers going across areas of the Western U S the Northern Rockies. We got a lot of rain down here and deep in Texas. So we're getting some, some some much needed rain i would say so let me know what you're seeing down there in south texas but scattered rain we continue to get just the leftovers of francine that's just kind of hanging out of down here but francine is pretty much weakened we're just getting this funnel of moisture uh there's kind of i would say currents in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's actually working in tandem to bring a lot of moisture out the gulf so that's why we continue just to get pesky heavy rain down here in Alabama, northern Mississippi, all the way into western Tennessee, the Boot Hill, Missouri, even northeast Arkansas. And then we got something trying to develop off the coast of the southeast. You see all this unsettled weather right here. This is what we're watching. Let's get a little bit closer to it. Hopefully the resolution will be fine here. All right, there it goes. Um, see it, you know, trying to get its act together. We got to just watch. This is going to be a day of watching off the coast of the southeast. We're going to see if anything can really consolidate and look better organized that's for sure so that's what's going on right now watch as warnings and advisories we do have wind vi wind advisories across areas of nevada just um california arizona utah we got flood watches across alabama that remain and we're starting to get flood watches up for now the pd is south carolina southeast north carolina and we continue to have heat advisories down here for south florida so winter weather advisories are up remain and remain up for the sierra nevada so Excessive rainfall, we still have a slight risk today for areas of southwest Alabama now, and this goes right up through southeast Mississippi and uh, central Mississippi, so we do have a 15% risk in that yellow area of rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance. Um, the Storm Prediction Center, we do have a marginal risk here stretching across the high plains of western Nebraska, northeast, um, I'm sorry, northeast uh, Colorado areas of western I need to get my directions uh, right this morning. Eastern Wyoming and southwestern um, South Dakota. Just a marginal risk. Tornado threat below two. Wind threat, just a 5% risk. And then hail threat, just a 5% risk of, uh, you know, just some gusty winds and some small hail. So 
not a big active uh, severe weather day whatsoever the southeast two things going on once again we're going to continue to get this push of moisture we've kind of already talked about this just we'll continue just to get and if you want a closer up look at what's going on in the southeast just go back to the breakdown of the tropics i really zoomed into this area for today into tomorrow so check that out but we're going to continue to get widespread moisture as you can tell across alabama mississippi you see this heavy rain down here especially for southwest alabama southeast mississippi a lot of scattered downpours and shower activity across the rest of the state of mississippi um, even into arkansas just will continue to get the pesky on and off downpours and um yeah we take it all the way to tomorrow morning we're going to be watching off the coast of the southeast like a hawk there to see if anything can develop but we're still going to be waking up tomorrow morning to a lot of moisture and dancing around here across mississippi kind of the mississippi delta region basically and uh, rainfall between now and the next 24 hours, somebody around Mobile could get over two inches of rain today. All the way to Meridian, Hattiesburg could get a few inches. I would say more so to a half an inch to an inch. Plume of heavy rain possible up here in Arkansas. An inch or so of rain, Jonesboro, watch out. And then right up to the middle, Jackson could get a little bit of rain, but I would say it'd be more so to your north. So Northeast, goodness, nothing. Your, your weather has been very calm the last week. Um, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm kind of ready to start breaking down some nor'easters for you guys. I know some people are yelling at me, no, Mitch, no, that's crazy. Uh, but, um, you know, sometimes I have to lift through you guys when it comes to snow. I think you guys know that's been tuning in for a while. I'm a huge snow fan, and uh, sometimes it excites me just to break down a winter storm for you guys. So uh, soon enough, it'll, it'll be upon us. But we get into tonight, nothing. Tomorrow morning, nothing. I think that'll change, especially for the mid-Atlantic as we get a, a couple days into the week with um, – this system off the coast of the southeast um the south central u.s will continue to get a lot of rain showers down here in south texas as you can tell i mean we could get some heavy rain too extreme southern texas i mean getting way down there some downpours we could get some showers and storms in new mexico also some scattered activity in colorado we'll have to watch this area in kind of south central or central texas for some downpours too these could drift into the houston area later this evening and um, bring some storm activity and we'll continue to move forward here arkansas uh, especially central to eastern arkansas uh, showers and downpours continue into the overnight hours all the way into tomorrow morning and then look at this big system starting to move into southwestern um, colorado even starting to see some blue show up on your map here so um the north central u.s uh, the great lakes region beautiful day expected warm um, nothing going on here um, we start to make it into the overnight hours, some scattered shower activity as possible in northern Minnesota. And we could have a risk of some severe weather in the high plains, but I can tell you not a whole lot is showing up on the HER model. It really waits all the way till about the wee hours of the morning, uh, tomorrow morning before it does develop any storms in central South Dakota. So if you live in central the Central Dakotas in general, don't be surprised if you wake up tomorrow morning to some storms, some lightning and thunder. Uh, you know, it really shows some storms getting going tomorrow morning more so in Central to Eastern North Dakota. So don't let that catch you by surprise here. So uh, the Western U.S., not that active today. We take it to about early to midway afternoon. We're getting some storms here in the Four Corners region. Very isolated. I mean, you don't see how they're that that widespread across the four corners we're getting this more organized area of rain here in central oregon and this could kind of develop and then surge northward uh, throughout northern oregon but everything's very isolated nothing widespread today that changes when we get into tomorrow so we're waking up tomorrow to a lot of energy across this northern sierra nevada here i mean even western nevada uh, we're getting some shower activity. We're waking up to uh, tomorrow across Oregon, but look at this plume of moisture down here in Arizona, kind of uh, east of uh, Phoenix, kind of north of Tucson, in this area right here, and pretty much right here in the middle of the four corner states. We're getting a lot of moisture, and uh, yeah, I think tomorrow will be a, a different day, a different beast here, as we're getting a lot of storm activity. Cold air aloft will allow for some snow, heavy snow, bursts of snow up here in the higher elevations of the Rockies. And then look at the snow starting to fall in the Sierra Nevada. So tomorrow will definitely be an active day across the West. I mean, a lot of activity everywhere. It's about time. By the time we get into tomorrow afternoon, we got energy pretty much scattered across everywhere across the Western U.S. So 
are definitely watching for that. But temperatures today, I tell you, you know, a lot of people have been talking about it, but it's pretty hot up here in the Great Lakes region. I mean, 80s, some areas, somebody might hit 90 degrees in, in Michigan and Wisconsin today and definitely Indiana, Illinois. The only reason it's been cooler in the southeast is just because of rain and cloud cover trust me we'd be pretty hot too if it wasn't for that in fact oh i went to that gamecock lsu game yesterday and oh man that was um i'm not gonna get into it not gonna get into it but it was a tough one that was a tough one um i try not to let football bother me too much but i'm a passionate football fan and uh yeah that was a tough one but anyways to relate it to weather the sun came out and as soon as the sun came out it's like oh there's a reminder that it's still september in the south and I actually got sunburn on my face and uh, not burnt, but just a lot of sun on my neck and my face. And it's it, that's all it takes is the sun to pop out and the heat and humidity will tell you, hey, I'm still here just behind all these clouds. Um, but it's definitely not, you know, when you see those 70s down there in the south, that's not a nice crisp pumpkin spice latte air mass. That is still very humid conditions in the low 80s to 70s. But the northeast um, 70s, 80s. It's pretty hot across the middle of the country, uh, 80s and 90s. Nothing terrible, but still very hot. And then, uh, you know, the western U.S. starting to cool down from this area of low pressure that's moving in. Uh, that's going to bring a lot of unsettled weather across the western U.S. for tomorrow more so. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. Hope you guys are having a great weekend, and I'll talk to you again soon.